how can this type of information help? I said to begin with that, that our nation and the discussions that are going on here are just trying to figure out if there's any biology to be had in this situation. Are, is there any evidence that these are biological processes or genetic processes? The very information itself, the very idea of this and the data that have come from these studies were studied in, uh, in Swedes. They took 992 adult Swedes. Now, you have to understand that Sweden, we think of it as being a very liberal country. But in regard to sexual orientation and tolerance of homosexuality, they have not always been so. And over about the past 30 years, they have, they have changed their attitude and changed their level of tolerance in significant ways. So this was a good population to study. So 992 adults were studied. They found a significant change from previous studies in not only tolerance, but in attitude toward homosexuality. They went further and found that the reasons for that change were threefold. One was anti-discrimination legislation. The second was increased visibility of homosexuals. In other words, people knew someone who were homosexual. And finally, the belief that homosexuality has a biological cause and is a normal variant of human sexuality. This study did not prioritize any of these three. Did not set out to and, and certainly did not conclude that one was more or less important than the other. Simply that these three factors together have changed the way that that nation and that population thinks and feels about homosexuality. So it's, it's that last thing that I'm so passionate about is to have the information, the education out there so that people can understand and add this to the discussions that we're having as a nation. So we come back to that question, does biology and genetics play a role in sexual orientation? I hope that I have shown you enough to get you to start thinking about this and understanding it. Sexual orientation has a strong genetic component in gay males. There's good evidence for that. That at least some of the genes map to this XQ28 region of the X chromosome. And that animal studies suggest that this is going to be a very complex situation to try to understand. At least three chromosomes are implicated. Many genes are involved. And that our best understanding of the mechanism of how the genes do this is the neurohormonal model. That's at the forefront of our current understanding. And it's supported by many, many scientific studies done different ways, different places, different measurements by different scientists. So sexual differentiation and orientation is under hormonal control. Hormones that are produced by the fetus itself and hormones that exert that control between the 8th and 16th week of gestation. Thank you.